welcome back. I'm Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Uh, before we get started today, we are going to do the uh, what can I make with my hand spun. And I have uh, my wonderful husband to uh, model some stuff I made for him uh, three or four years ago. Uh, and then we will get to uh, how to a chain fly. This is a uh, fiber that I hand dyed and spun. This is the uh, Rhinefleck hat, and then the uh, cowl is in swirl, and I made this for my husband. Um, I made it in the Ordway Pond colorway, which was a picture that he sent me from uh, the boys' weekend, which was he and my son and our nephew, and uh, they uh, went up to uh, the Adirondacks, and uh, they sent some pictures back, and these were the colors that were predominant, and I made this awesome thing for him. Uh, it is super soft, and let's see if we can... You're so tall, he's six foot eight. So lower your head because I can't see the top of the hat. Oh yeah, thanks. So isn't that cool? I love that part. <laughs> Thank you. My wonderful and tolerant model. Okay, you can put your head back up normal. <laughs> Thank you. Here we have uh, the uh, two separate singles from uh, last week's video. This is the uh, Coopworth 50-50 uh, cross. Uh, spun at a uh, 24 single WPI, and this is the uh, progressive bat, uh, and this is the uh, end of the dark, and it goes to the uh, light grayish pink at the bottom, and I'm going to chain ply each one of these separately. Uh, what I'll do is I'll probably just show you this one because it'll be f more fun because of the color, and I'll just do this one off camera because it's just all kind of one color, but I'll show you both the yarns when we're finished. Let's get to it. We are ready to get started here. Uh, I wanted to show you how I start from the very beginning because so many times I'm already sort of in progress when you uh, join me. With your uh, Lazy Kate, you want to have the tension set uh, a little bit less uh, than you normally would because you don't want to break the uh, single. All I'm doing here is I'm just tying my uh, single, the end of it, into a loop here. And my leader also has a loop on it right here. And I have that tied into a loop like that. And so what I'm going to do is I take um, the uh, loop from the, my, so I'm doing this left-handed. So I'm going to pull the loop. I'm going to put this loop through that loop. And here I have this is what I have now. Let me uh, wind this forward just a touch here. Good. And now you can see that I put that loop through and now I'm ready to roll. What I'm going to do here is turn this on, my auto winder, and we'll get started. So my right hand is forward and then it, I'm making a loop with my left hand. And then I'm going to let this wind onto the bobbin. And then I just keep pulling through and as I come back, I'm grabbing the uh, fiber through here. So I'm pulling it through like a chain ply and then I'm holding onto the fiber. And I'll show you this from the front too, just in case I'm not getting it here. Um, it's, it's tough to capture uh, because um, you have to be far away. Uh, let me uh, reset here and see if you can see it. So what I'm doing is I'm making the, I'm putting my hand through the loop. This is the single coming from the bobbin here in my right hand. And I'm just pulling that through while I'm treadling like that. And I'm just going to make the big loop like that. And then this is all now three ply and that's what chain ply is. It's just a version of a three ply. Um, the, uh, tension on this is, uh, I, I'd like to keep some tension on it. And one of the keys is, you know, sometimes it's just a train wreck of it coming back on itself. So I am controlling all of the twists through here. I am pinching with my front hand when I'm pulling on my loop here. And I'm holding this tension with my back hand now so that these are all parallel and I'm getting the twist in it that I want. And as it comes forward to the orifice, I'm making another loop with my hand and I'm trying to make the loops as big as I can just to reduce the number of joins that you have uh, where you get that the, the uh, loop. Um, however, uh, usually you can't even see the loop. 
if you have not enough twist, you'll be able to see the, the loop better. And if you have, um, uh, sometimes if you have a bulkier yarn, you might not get it, the tension even when you come through. So I'm going to continue on doing this. So big loop, and then uh, the other key to uh, chain plying is usually your feet move faster than your hands. Most, most people, that's true. So treadling a little bit slower is going to be um, the answer. Or using a lower um, ratio on your wheel so that you're not getting as many flyer rotations per wheel rotation. So I think this is, a, it's okay. This looks like it's around a 15 degree angle of ply. Yeah, that's like 15. I need just a tiny bit more twist. I mean, I don't want it to be rope-like, but I do want it to be a little more. Uh, that's more like it. I, I don't want the fibers to separate. So when I'm letting this ply back on itself, I don't want to see these literally untwist. Uh, I don't want to see that they're separating. Uh, and that looks good. I I'm happy with that. So let's continue on. I'm pinching here as I pull my hand through. Big a loop as I can, and I just pick up the fiber, the uh, single that's coming from the bobbin. And again, I just pinch at the front, and then I... When everything's nice and parallel, I let the twist in, let it go on, pinch, big loop, and just let this twist travel back. Big loop. And again, you know, watching the speed of your feet, especially if you're new with this, uh, the treadle speed, uh, it's difficult. If you're used to treadling fast and then you do this, it's very, very slow. <laughs> This is looking lovely. I like this yarn quite a bit. I, I did the uh, all gray brown one uh, that has like that little tiny touch of pink. It turned out gorgeous. All right, let me come around to the front so you can see this from the front. I'm gonna pick up my loop right where I left off. Turn on and we're ready. So what I'm doing is I'm just making a big loop and I'm pulling this parallel. Big loop, pinching up here when I'm making that big loop so that it uh, doesn't um, bunch up the fiber or the twist doesn't run in here before I'm parallel, making it really uneven and wonky that can cause tangles. This is all you do. And right here, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna hold it up here. Right here is where everything joins. It's where these two loops are together and the yarn from the uh, bobbin is coming back on itself. So uh, that is where, when people talk about getting little bumps and stuff in their knitting, in their yarn, it's right there. And so the key to having that uh, work well is to have good tension on it so that when you are allowing this twist to come up in there, it's very smooth. Now, I could run my hand over this, I can't even tell where the join is. I mean, there's no bump here whatsoever. Uh, and that's what you want. You just want to make it so that it's nice and smooth. So I pinch here at the front, let this twist travel up nice and even because I'm trying to keep these uh, parallel to each other. So you get beautiful twist traveling up. And we're just going to keep on keeping on. Let me see. Let's check and see what our uh, twist is like. Pause right here. I'll just hold all this for now. All right. And let me take a look at this. So this actually might be a little more twist than I want. Let's check it out. The yarn looks lovely though. 
but I want it to be a nice light and fluffy yarn. I don't want it to be super firm. And what do we got here? Oh yeah, that's too much twist. I don't like that much twist in there. That's like 45. <laughs> so we gotta take some of that out. Okay. I'm gonna take some of this twist out and get it to travel on up here. And that's something you can always do. So now look, see all that that was tight before? Now it is uh, overly loose, but that's okay. That's what I want, because I'm gonna just put the twist back in exactly the way I want it. Perfect, and now it's not over twisted. And this is what I mean about speed kills, because if you treadle too fast, you're gonna get a lot more uh, accumulated twist. And I'm doing this a little bit slower than I would typically do it so you can see what I'm doing, because if you go really fast, it's hard to follow. But this is all there is. Um, what else is happening? Not much. I have this whole week off for the holiday, and I'm really, really looking forward to doing a whole bunch of videos, so hopefully I'll be able to get ahead. I've been behind for so long now. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to catch up a little bit on some video making and uh, be able to... I have a lot of projects that I want to do. Um, I think next up, though, is going to be uh, some drum carding. I do love drum carding over my Christmas holiday. It's like my favorite thing to do. And I have those... Uh, the lotus flower design uh, that I got at the Alpaca Festival in Maryland uh, in November. Oh, I love them. I already started goofing around with it. And I'll show you at the start of the next video. Um, I think we'll do some drum carding and I'll tell you all about it. But it's super cool and exciting and it's really, really easy. So um, they, Lotus Flower Design does have a website and I would highly recommend uh, picking up some of their mills. And my favorite part, here we have the uh, progressive chain ply. Let's see how we did with the twist. Ah, uh, looks good. Let's get this into soak and then I'll show you both of the final yarns. Here is our final yarn. Uh, this was uh, 75 grams each, so 150 grams is around 5.3 ounces and it looks really nice. Um, one thing that I would like to point out is on the uh, first one that I did, although it is pretty soft, um, this is definitely, um, you know, next to skin soft. I, I, I would, I'm gonna make this into a cowl, it's gonna be nice. Uh, I had a little bit higher of a twist on this, and I did a slightly uh, less twist on this one. And although they're the same weight of yarn, let's see if we can get closer up to you guys here. Uh, the one uh, that's the uh, colored one, it feels airier and a little bit softer. And I think that's because it's less twist, so it's not as um, firm of a yarn. Now, will this pill easier with the less twist? Probably. Uh, but um, I, I liked the way this looked. I mean, I like the way this looks too, but this one is just, the twist, I just, it was a little bit higher twist. That's more than 30 and it's pretty consistent. Uh, here, I can show you. Let's just pick a side by side here and you can see the difference uh, in the uh, twist. Let's get my little twisty thing, my control tool. So this one is, this one is spot on at 30. And when I was doing this one, I was going a little fast uh, and uh, my feet got away from me. And yeah, this is 45. So this is like 45, which is a little bit more than I wanted. It might be 40 in some of the spots. Let's see here. Yeah, that's about 40. So, you know, it's around somewhere between 35 and 45 for the most part. Um, and this is 30 on the dot. Uh, so I like the 30 on the dot. Uh, and you know, that just goes to show you how things can change um, when you uh, have more or less twist uh, when you ply. Um, you can have a soft, you know, airier yarn, especially when I did wool and prep, wool and draw. Uh, so this is, you know, light and airy. This is still light and airy. It's not like rope by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a little firmer. Let's see if we can, you can see the difference here, maybe even. 
So it's just a little bit firmer. This one is really collapses easily. And this one, not quite as easy as this one, if you can see there. Um, so the uh, that is the difference. Um, but they're both lovely. And I did end up getting the weight that I wanted. And I think this is going to look really good together. So I'm going to do that Starburst cowl. And um, we will be uh, all set. So I will see you next time. Um, I planned on doing a bunch of drum carding stuff. Uh, I just got word that next week my new drum carter will be arriving. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, my last bit of drum carding with my old drum carter. And then uh, next week we will start with the uh, Clems and Clems uh, electric crankless double Y drum carter. I will see you next time. Until then, spin happy.